Hey everyone, this is Sean with Red Arrow Industries, and today I'm going to take you through a crash course in Avid Media Composer first. And though this free version is stripped of some functions and features that are only in the full version, it's still a very powerful editing software. I'm going to show you guys some basics to get you started, but keep in mind there are tons of different methods to do each of the things I'm about to do. Ready? Let's begin. You've downloaded and installed the program, and you're greeted by this project screen. After naming your project and choosing a location for it, click Create at the bottom. Now, the first thing we need to do is ingest the footage you're wanting to edit. To do this, go to the Clips bin that's already been opened for you, right-click, move down to Input, and click on Source Browser. From there, navigate to the footage you're wanting to ingest. At the bottom left, you are given the option to link or import your footage. I'm going to import. It takes a little longer to ingest than linking, but it makes for a smoother editing experience in the long run. Check import, and a prompt will pop up asking you to choose your raster and the frame rate you want for this project. The clips I'm working with are 1080p at 2397, so that's what I'm choosing. Hit OK, choose your clips, and this time, hit the import button at the bottom right. Now to get some shots in a sequence. Double-click the first clip you want to add, which brings the clip up into your source monitor. Press I to mark in, and O to mark out around the section of the clip you want to use. Once you have that, simply press the B button, which is your overwrite button, to throw it into a new sequence, which is placed into your sequences bin. Your sequence is now displayed in the top right screen, which is known as the record monitor. Now go back to your clips bin, double-click another clip, mark in and out, and overwrite it into the timeline. Keep doing this for every clip you want to add to your sequence. Once you have all the clips you want in your sequence, you may realize there's a few you want to replace, move, shorten, or lengthen. It's worth noting that by default, the Smart Tool is on, which allows your cursor to switch between Segment Mode and Trim Mode depending on where you have your cursor placed. Your red arrow moves clips while overwriting, your yellow arrow allows you to switch shots around, and I'll explain the trim tool in just a second. Another thing worth noting is using the scale bar down here at the bottom to zoom in and out of your timeline to get a better view. Let's say you notice a shot that you no longer want, but you still want something between these two shots. Press T to mark in and out at the same time on that shot, find the shot you want to replace it with, and press B to overwrite it. Now, you like that shot, but you feel like you need one more between it and the next one. Going back to your clips bin, mark in and out around another shot, and this time press V to splice it in. Instead of overwriting the shot there, it pushed everything to the right of your position indicator down your timeline. If you decide that shot wasn't really needed after all, press T to mark in and out, then press Z to lift it, which removes the shot, but leaves a gap. If you want to remove a shot while closing the gap in your timeline, press X, to extract it. Great, but now you feel like this shot is a little too long and this one is a little too short. Well, either move your mouse between the clips to get your trim tool to pop up like I mentioned earlier, or press U to open the trim tool and trim the shots to the length you want them. So you have the shots you want, now let's add music. Just like importing footage, we're going to right click in the clips bin, go to input, Source Browser, find our music, select, and click Import. Once that's in, double-click the song to load it into the source monitor. Before you hit B to throw in your music, make sure of three things. One, you need to create enough audio tracks to put your music on. Otherwise, it's going to overwrite the NAT sounds from your clips. The audio I've imported came in as two mono tracks, so I need to make two more mono tracks on my timeline which can be done by pressing Ctrl or Command U to add a mono track. Two, now that we have enough tracks, we need to patch our tracks to the right spot. Move A1 and A2 from your source side down to A3 and A4 on your record side. And three, the music will overwrite starting wherever your position indicator is, so be sure it's at the first frame of your sequence and only the tracks you want to overwrite are selected because even though it's audio, it will still overwrite your video unless those tracks are deselected. Once you have all of that in order, 
Hit B, baby. Now you have yourself a nice little video with music. If you need to turn your Nats and music up and down, go to Tools at the top, click on Audio Mixer, and adjust as needed. Looks pretty good, right? But I still think there's something missing, a little pizzazz. So let's add a title to the beginning. Click this T icon here to open Title Tool. Make sure this little V here is green, which displays our video background. Otherwise, it will just make a title with a black background. And with your text tool highlighted, click somewhere on the center and type your title. Then click the selection tool and move it where you want. Close out of your title tool window and it will prompt you to save your title and will be displayed in your source monitor. Press Ctrl or Command Y to make a new video track on your timeline. And with your title being patched to V2, mark in and out where you want your title to be and hit that B button. Nice. If you want your title to dissolve, press the backslash button above your enter key and hit add. All right, Spielberg, you have your video, your audio, and your music all how you want it. It's time to export this puppy. Right click on your sequence in your sequences bin. Go to publish to, and I'm going to pick local drive. Until you get more comfortable in Media Composer first, just leave the settings on their default. Hit OK at the bottom right, and your first Avid-based blockbuster will be waiting for you right there on the desktop. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And you should really check out our other tutorials on Avid Media Composer, because they're still very relevant to Avid Media Composer first. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook at Red Arrow Industries, or on our website at redarrowindustries.com.